Okay, we're back to boat rigging. Um, I've got uh, this new Lund Pro V bass here. It's a blank canvas, and I'm just gonna kind of walk through and do a bunch of videos on how we set all this stuff up. Um, so today I'm gonna throw some lithium batteries in here. I've got a 36 volt system with these new CanBat 100 amp hour batteries, and I've got a Minn Kota 440 charger, uh, precision charger to put in. So. I'll just kind of walk you through the basics and uh, a couple little tricks just to get the most of your trolling motor batteries. Uh, if you're new to this channel, it's usually a little more fun than this. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> um, you can just kind of creep around my my channel and watch some, some better videos if you just want to watch fishing. Uh, if you are interested, then cool. Um, make sure you just like, subscribe, comment some stuff. Uh, anything just to kind of help out the channel a little bit. It's obviously not as fun making the boat rigging videos and just kind of doubles the work. So any little bit of love in the comments always helps. Thanks a lot. Okay, so first up, I uh, pulled the charger out of the box last night, laid out my batteries on a board and just gave it a dry run, plugged them in, charged it up, make sure there's no problems. It's super rare, but you know, you hear stories once in a while, freak accidents of, you know, if you, if you get a bad battery, I've seen I've seen it happen before with some sketchy batteries where you know people have put them in and, and plugged it in and just left the boat, you know, the first day. So I always do a dry run on the concrete, you know, minimize the damage if any any kind of freak accident were to happen. Um, these can bats that I'm using are from a super reputable company. Uh, they're a huge operation, and you know I trust them. These are super expensive boats. I don't need to tell you that. Uh, the last thing you want to do is put some garage band battery in there and you know burn it down. So I use can bats. Uh, yeah, if you want it, any more info on them, let me know. Uh, they got a website, canbat.com. It's a Canadian company. Enter promo code Bruce5 for 5% off and you'll get some free shipping. And they've got AGMs and all kinds of other batteries too. So check them out. So one thing that I always do, especially in a brand new boat, uh, is just get some cardboard, lay it down and just put your batteries on that. Um, these lithium ones aren't gonna leak or nothing like that, but you, sometimes you pick up a little bit of dirt and if you're dealing with older batteries, then sometimes there's some grime or you know a little bit of leak on the bottom or anything like that. Just things you don't want on your bass boat floor. So just gonna grab everything I need and pile in. And I mean like, these things are 26 pounds. They're super light, so this is gonna be a pleasure. I'm used to huge AGMs. This is a gift. I got them all teed up there in my sockies because it's a brand new rig. And you gotta be anal your first trip in. So this Lund is like about the easiest boat there is to set the batteries up in. Um, You can see it's, you know, it's already pre-rigged for 36 volts. Trays are there, straps are there, spot for the charger, like just a gift. Obviously you're gonna face different setups and have to find, you know, different areas to put your battery, but if you have a Lund Pro V Bass, then you are in luck. Historically, this is the worst part of boat, rigging a boat is uh, loading batteries in yourself because they usually weigh 75 pounds. Um, Usually you have a buddy around to help, but we're in lockdown country here, so doing everything solo, but this probably isn't gonna be too bad. Like, look how light that is. One finger, settle her in there, get the strap on, no problem. Absolute cupcake procedure. Okay. Okay, I know I've really been pumping CanBats tires here, um, but that was insanely easy. Um, that's usually a nightmare job for one person dropping those things in there and you know, you cut up your hands and everything and they're just so light, like, yeah, that's a gift. I'll stop talking about how light they are now. So we'll get back to rigging. So before we get deep into the batteries, I'm just gonna get some jumper wires out first. Uh, this, like I said, this boat's already pre-rigged. 
with a 36 volt system, so I'll need two jumper wires. Lund hooks you up with those. Uh, not sure what other bolt brands do, but um, if you're installing a 24 volt, you need one. If you're installing a 36 volt, you need two. If you're installing a 12 volt, you don't need them. So definitely check uh, with your dealership or whatever, just check it out before you start this process. But in this case, I'm laughing and I have two, so that's good. Thank you, Lund. Ooh, all kinds of goodies in there. Okay, so before you go any further into this rig, um, grab some labels or masking tape or painter's tape or just a Sharpie or whatever you can and just make the labels one, two, three. And I'm gonna show you why and that's gonna save you down the road. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't matter what batteries you put them on right now. I'm gonna do one, two, and three. I don't know if you can see that, but it says one, two, three. I went one, two, three. And you'll see why in a second. So now I'm gonna find the positive lead from the trolling motor that I just installed. If you'd need a video on how to install a trolling motor, check out my videos. So here we go, positive lead. I always put the positive on battery one and find your negative here. Bring that negative off the troller to battery three. And this is why I put battery three beside this one instead of battery two, just for simplicity. And I don't need these real tight for now, I'm just dry fitting them. So I've got positive on battery one, negative on battery three. Then I'm gonna take my jumper cables and I'm gonna jump positive on battery two to negative on battery one and positive on battery three to negative on battery two. It sounds confusing, maybe, and maybe you can't see real great, but just look it up on the web or I'll even drop a diagram in this video actually, right about now. That way you can get a visual look for yourself and yeah, it makes a pretty big spark if you put them backwards. So we're gonna clean this up in a minute. Um, but that's a fully hooked up 36 volt system. She's ready to troll. Okay, so for an onboard charger, um, I've used these in the past. They're just what I've always gone to. I've uh, never had an issue with them. This is a Minn Kota Precision. This one's the MK440. They make one size bigger. It's a four banker, one for each uh, trolling motor battery that I'll run one back to my cranker. Um, but yeah, these are sweet. They're just plug and play and you can grab them at uh, Lake of the Woods Sports headquarters or at lakeofthewoodsports.com. So one thing you'll hear a lot of talk about, especially when it comes to lithium batteries, uh, is what to use for a charger. Um, a couple of companies sell their own kind of little individual like clip-on alligator chargers and you'll see like a big mess of wires, you know, in the parking lot of people's boats and that's what's going on there. Um, if you actually look at the numbers, um, an automatic charger with a setting for AGM or gel uh, will work. What won't work is a charger that's only for lead acid batteries. And the reason for that is at the end of a lead acid batteries charging cycle, uh, it'll ramp up to like 15 and a half. This one's 15 and a half volts. I'm not sure what the universal average is, uh, but it'll, it'll ramp up to equalize that, um, you know, and give it that last shot. Well, that, if you do that to your lithiums, um, they all have these battery monitoring systems in them, or the good ones do anyway, and uh, it'll shut down to, you know, prevent any any uh, damage to the battery or anything like that. So you're going to have troubles if you have it on that. Um, I'm going to put this one on AGM. That's what's worked in the past. And uh, yeah, I'd sure rather have one of these than like a big clip on unit every time. So, you know, uh, look at the specifications of your specific battery. Uh, for CAN bats, everything checks out and it should be all good. So, I mean, I, I have enough confidence in it that I'm putting up my brand new boat and, you know, putting all my faith into it. So I'm not an expert, but that's my take on it. There's not a whole lot to know when it comes to this thing. Like I said, Lund's already got it carved out for one. So this is like world's easiest boat to work on. in there and hopefully it fits you 
you can just buy them with these chargers too. You don't have to do this. This is just my own doing. The charges they come with are fine and you don't have to mess around like this, but. Okay, so there's number one. Pass it through here and all the way up to battery one at the front. The less clutter you have in your battery compartment, the easier your life's gonna be if you have an issue down the road. Pass it through here and all the way up to battery one at the front. And just repeat that process until all the terminals are on. Okay, so every battery's got some form of trolling motor wire on it or jumper and a charger on each battery. And the numbers on the charger all coincide with the numbers on the battery. Straps are on, everything's as organized as it can be. Um, eh, maybe there's a couple things I could do to clean it up a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that was the hard, hardest part of the whole process. Mounting that onboard charger down there, it should have been the simplest, but just because of the way it laid, I had to get extension bars and wibble wobbles and a right angle attachment all these things are good to have because you're always going to run into issues like that at some point if you're rigging a whole boat so uh yeah i think it's an extension bar that's a flexible extension and a right angle attachment those three you can pretty much get through any kind of nightmare scenario like that definitely good to have around uh, I don't need to show that part because the content probably wasn't exactly family friendly, so you'll have to figure that out on your own. Okay, so last step, and this isn't going to be any kind of surprise at all, because uh, I know I've done it right, I've double checked everything. Plug the troller in, come back here. Beautiful. Music to my ears. I'm not going to need to plug the charger in to test it, uh, like I already did last night, so. I already know everything's good there. The batteries are all topped up. No sense leaving it plugged in. Uh, back in the old days, people used to leave lead acid batteries like plugged in all winter and crazy stuff like that. That's one of the really nice thing about the lithium batteries is there's no consequence for leaving them not ch uh, fully charged over you know a reasonable length of time. So they're a lot more forgiving that way and. Uh, yeah, otherwise that's pretty much it. Uh, be a couple more rigging videos coming at you. So subscribe, turn your notification on. Uh, maybe drop me a like and a comment and we'll see you next time.